This lecture is part of an online mathematics course on group theory and will be about extensions of groups. So to motivate this, let's try to classify groups G of order eight. So we've done orders one to seven in earlier lectures. So this is the next case. Now the elements of G have order dividing eight. So they all have order one, two, four, or eight. And we want to show there's an element of order four. Well, it isn't always. Um, suppose there are no elements of order four or eight, then all elements of order are, have order two. And if all elements have order two, well, we've already classified groups such that all elements of order one or two. And we saw they're just products of groups of order two. So this means G is equal to Z over two Z times Z over two Z times Z over two Z. So we may as well assume G has an element, little g of order four. If it is order eight, we can just square it and get an element of order four. Um, so we look at the subgroup H, which is all powers of G. So H is order four, and we notice H has index two, so is normal in G. So let's draw a picture of what we've got. We've got an element one. We've got a group Z over four Z, which is um, isomorphic to H, and this is a subgroup of G, and the quotient is a group of order two, and the only possibility is Z modulo two Z. So we get an exact sequence like this. This means Z over four Z is a subgroup of G, or more precisely, isomorphic to a subgroup of G, and the quotient of G by this group is isomorphic to the group of order two. So this is a typical extension problem. Um, an extension problem means we have an exact sequence like this where we know these two groups and want to figure out what this group is. Um, so we say G, if, if we have a sequence, one goes to A, goes to G, goes to B, goes to one, we say that G is, a, a, is an extension of B by A. Actually, we sometimes say G is an extension of A by B because it's almost impossible to remember which way around A and B are supposed to go, but whatever. Um, so uh, we now have this problem. How do we classify all possible extensions of Z modulo two by Z modulo four? So let's take a look at the possibilities. So, um, uh, so, so um, let's say that A contains an element A, little a, with a to the four equals one. I've changed it from G to A so that we can remember it's an A. Now, we pick an element B in G mapping to um, an element of order two in B. This doesn't mean the element B of G has order two. It means its image in the group B has order two. So let's look at the possibilities. We know that B normalizes A. So this means that B to the minus one AB must be a generator of the group A because A is a generator. So it must be A or a cubed, which is the same as a to the minus one, because these are the only two elements in a of order four. And b squared must be an element of a, as it is image one in b. So b squared is equal to one a, a squared or a cubed. Now, if B is equal to A cubed, we just change A 
to its inverse, which is a cubed. So we can assume that b squared is equal to 1a or a squared. So here we've got three possibilities. And here we've got two possibilities. Um, and finally, of course, we should remember we've got this equation a to the 4 equals 1. So here we've got three um, equations for a and b, and there are altogether six possibilities for what these three equations are. So let's write them all out and see what we get. So first of all, we can have b to the minus 1ab is equal to a, or b to the minus 1ab is equal to a to the minus 1. So I'm going to draw a big rectangle giving us all the possibilities. And here we have b squared equals 1. And here we have b squared equals a squared a. And here we have b squared equals a squared. So let's see what we get here. Well, if b squared equals 1, this means that b actually generates a subgroup of order 2. So we get a semi-direct product. So if A and B commute, we just get the semi, we, the semi direct product is then a product. So we get Z over 2Z times Z over 4Z as the only possibility. So this is the group A and this is the group B. If B, A, B to the minus 1 is A to the minus 1, we get the semi direct product Z over 4Z semi-direct product z over 2z. So the group has a normal subgroup of order 4, and it also has a group of order 2 acting non-trivially on this. And it's pretty easy to see what we get. We just get the group of all symmetries of a square. So the element a is going to be just rotation. So A does this. So this is the element A with A to the 4 equals 1. And the element B, well, we can just take it to flip the square like this. So, so B exchanges the two sides of the square. We have B squared equals 1. And you can check that B A B to the minus 1 is indeed A to the minus 1. So, so that gives the second possibility. Um, this case is really easy to deal with because it doesn't exist. The point is that if b squared equals a, this implies b actually commutes with a, because a is just b squared. So we can't have b a b equals a to the minus 1. Um, this case is quite easy because b commutes with a and b squared equals a, so we get b to the 8 is equal to 1. So we just get the cyclic group of order 8 generated by b. And we notice that a is the group generated by b squared, so it consists of 1 b squared, b to the 4, b to the 6. So that's again a group we've had before. Um, this case here turns out to be a case we've already got before, because what we can do is if we put B, big, uh, I better not call it big B, let's put C equals AB, then we see that C squared is now equal to 1, and C to the minus 1 AC equals A. And now we see but this case here is really the same as this case here. So these are actually the same. Um, we can, in other words, we've just picked, uh, it turns out that when we picked this element B, we actually made a bad choice of element and we could have chosen a better element, AB, and 
would have got this presentation here. So although this extension at first sight looked like a non-split extension that wasn't a semi-direct product, we see that it is in fact a, a disguised split extension. So we say an extension is split if it's really a semi-direct product. And this example shows it can be a bit tricky to tell whether an extension is split or not. Finally, we get to this case here, which is the most interesting one, where we have two elements, um, b to the 4 equals 1, because it's equal to a squared, a to the 4 equals 1, and b to the minus 1, a, b equals a to the minus 1. And the question, the first question is, is there any group of order 8 um, generated by elements with these properties? You see, it's not obvious, because sometimes if we write down um, properties of these elements, there might be no group that satisfies them. Well, this one, in fact, turned out to be the quaternion group, denoted by Q of 8. Um, this, by the way, I forgot to say, was the dihedral group, which we will be studying later, and is called D8. So the first thing we've got to do is to show that there actually is a quaternion group. So let's write it down explicitly. Well, we can just take these elements. We take a is equal to i minus i naught naught. So this is a two by two matrix with i squared equals minus one. And we take b to be the matrix naught one minus one naught. And we can then check that a to the four equals one, b to the four equals one, and um, um, was the relation um, b to the minus 1 a b equals a to the minus 1. So um, we found two matrices which satisfy these conditions. We'd better check that these do actually generate a group of order 8 because you see in this one we, we could actually find a group satisfying these conditions but it would only turn out to have order 4 not 8. It kind of collapses a bit. Um, well what we do is we look at the element c which is naught i i naught, and we look at the identity matrix, which is one naught naught minus one. And then G is going to be the eight elements plus or minus A, plus or minus B, plus or minus C, and plus or minus one naught naught one. And we can check that G is a group of order eight. Um, so the quaternion group um, really does exist. Um, by the way, the usual notation isn't to use A, B, and C for these elements, but to use elements I, J, and K, or sometimes uh, big little I and little J and little K. And then um, and we, we, we denote um, this element by 1 and minus 1, naught, naught, minus 1 by minus one. And then we find i, j, and k satisfies these relations. i squared equals j squared equals k squared equals i, j, k equals minus one. And these are rather famous because they're, 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 they're the relations for the ring of quaternions that was discovered by Hamilton in the 19th century. And he is rumored to have been so pleased by this discovery that he carved these on a bridge somewhere. Um, so um, next lecture, we're going to study the group of quaternions in more detail.